Today's lesson will cover angular material theming with flex layout and SAS mixins, and at the end of the entire lesson, we'll cover angular service so that you can switch the color theme within angular. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to clone the lesson nine tutorial, which actually had some angular material in it, and we're going to add the color service um, as well as the custom themes to that. If you feel like that's too much to handle, you can always just clone the lesson 10 final example and just follow along in the file structure so that you can see what's happening. In VS Code, once you open it up, we're actually gonna add a new path in our Angular router so that we can access what we're gonna call the kitchen sink. Uh, kitchen sink, typically in programming, is everything you can throw at the components within material in, in this example and see if it can load and kind of see everything that's happening at one time. In this example, we're gonna still continue to use our lazy loading strategy that we learned in lesson nine for Angular Router. And we will load up a new component so we can go ahead and create the new module uh, called modules and then kitchen sink and add routing to it. Um, as well as the component itself. And we'll pull that component from the GitHub repo from the material documents. I'm gonna move the, through this example pretty quickly to set up a new link. If you have questions or you wanna go back to lesson nine, you can see exactly how to set up these lazy loaded paths. We're really just getting to the point where we wanna add the kitchen sink component. If you go out to angularmaterial.com, or sorry, .io rather, you can go into the GitHub repo and you'll find an area that has um, the kitchen sink if you search for it. And this has testing for everything. So we're just gonna pull the HTML and whatever uh, TypeScript that we might need for this lesson. And we'll put that in our new component. Now we've basically placed every single component that Ma Angular Material offers into a single page. This is probably not the, the best scenario for running this sort of uh, site, but as you can see, it does load just fine. Um, I'll cover a few things on the size of this lazy loaded route and um, also in the styles for when we work through those. But as you can see, everything loaded up and we were able to import all of the necessary modules. So the next step is to kind of make this layout look a lot better. We're gonna start using the FX layout by Angular. And this is also under the at Angular namespace. So it's pretty well maintained by the Angular team. This will allow us to kind of straighten up the uh, layout for this entire component, as well as some of our toolbar um, settings to put the color picker off to the right. This allows for the use of the APIs for the CSS grid and media query so that you can use it more of a, in an angular fashion and you don't have to understand a lot of the CSS, just kind of how to use FX layout itself. Not that I'm recommending that learning CSS, but if you're like me, I'm terrible at it and I'm still working on it. So this seems a little simpler and it's a little more familiar to like Ionic or Bootstrap's uh, grid layouts. If you're following along, please make sure to add this via NPM. You can install it at angular slash flex dash layout. And now that we have the module, we'll have to import it into our the, the normal way in our kitchen sink dot module dot TS. And it's the flex layout module that we'll be headed towards. I often find it's easiest to put flex layout in almost all of my modules. So I usually try to put it under the common module as I don't often have to use all of the material modules, so I usually leave those for later on. Basically what Flex Layout allows us to do is create a column or a row based structure and everything will float within that um, using the Flex Layout. So at first I actually set this up for a row wrap so every component area would show up beside the next one. I found that was a little rough to view, especially on mobile. So in the final version, if you pull it down, I switched the FX layout type to column and then I wrapped every single component area, uh, for instance, autocomplete and button login or button toggle with a span so that that is the area that does the the FX, the, the FX flex, which is the flex box itself. Now that we have that set up, we're gonna start to work on creating the toolbar for a button to select different colors. 
And we're also going to use Flexbox there. So make sure if you're following along that you import that into your uh, side nav module. We're, it should already be mostly set up, but what we're going to add is a color picker icon, just like on Angular Materials website, so that when you click that, it'll drop down into a menu structure. Flexbox or Flex module will allow us to put a no grow on the end, so everything in the middle will correctly align and it will push that all the way to the right, as if it were a float right or if it were an absolute value if you're using CSS. Now that we have the button, we can actually create a material menu. So we'll add the menu option in, and all of the menu items will be a different swatch that has a color in it, but it's going to be based on some SAS that we actually add to the, the styles area. We can go into the side nav component as CSS and take a look and you should see a class that has all of the uh, color switch classes that we're gonna use against this. If you notice carefully, there's actually a SAS function in here that is called mat-color and that is doing a lookup in SAS itself for all of the colors that are required to theme this correctly. So it goes out and says, for my background color, please set it for Angular Material, Material Router App Primary. If you check out the theme that is already listed in the Styles folder, we have one out there called Material Angular Material Theming, and this has a few custom colors already built in. Those came from Material Design Palette Generator, and it's an easy way to do any of your custom colors that you'd like and then you can download them directly into a SAS style format. Once you're happy with all the colors that you've selected, you can go up to the top right and there's a download area. Make sure to switch to the Angular Material 2 download. It will give you the SAS variables that we're looking for. Once you have copied all those variables, please place them into our theme file, the Angular Material Router theme.scss found in your styles directory. Now that we have all of these styles that we're going to require, we need to set up the primary accent and worn for each theme. So we're going to copy the one that was already there and that was set up and we'll go ahead and create five or six different themes depending on what you copied in. Um, so for our example, we're going to do green, yellow, purple, and pink so that you can see the difference when you switch those. I'm also gonna change a few of these for the dark theme so that you'll see the difference between the material light theme and the material dark theme. We'll then use these SAS variables directly in our side nav component.scss. You have to import the Angular Material Router theme into that file so that it understands where those variables are coming for. Check out the source code if you're curious on how to do that. So you'll notice here we're, we've changed each one and we're using that mat color function to, um, to highlight the, the background color into the correct color. If you need to ever put text or anything, I often will put mat-contrast as the alternative function. This will give you the correct color text for whatever background you're using. At this time, you should be able to reload the app and in the drop down menu, you should see all of the colors that we just specified for the classes for the background color of that menu item. Now that we have our menu items set up, we actually need to create a service that will switch the class that exists on the top level div. You can do this by using the Angular CLI. You can do NGGS. I usually put all of my services in a special place called core. So it'll be core services and then color picker. These services, when generated by the Angular CLI, end up in the root, so they'll load when the app loads. I tend to think about my applications always from the UI and kind of going back in. So even though we have that service, I wanted to remember to set up our pick color uh, click handlers on our side nav component. So that way, once we put the service into the components TS file, we can use it. Jumping back into our new color picker service, we can set up a behavior subject that will have a default value of Angular Material Router App Theme. 
that's what was on the div within the side or sorry in the app component uh, HTML to start with we're just gonna always set that so it has a base color and then we're gonna set up a getter and a setter class so that we can update the the theme file based on the color that we're gonna send to it from the side nav component as well as setting the overlay container the overlay container is something unique with the angular material theming it's for things that kind of float above the the main dom itself or the main the main div that you're sitting in so things like dialogues or snack bars or things these happen within the overlay container not necessarily the component you're working in be careful on how you're removing the classes before updating the uh, class list for the overlay container. I don't have any other classes on mine, so I'm just removing anything that is out there. So I use a for each command. If you have something specific, you might need to get a little more clear on what class you're looking to remove. Now that we've cleared off the theme class from the overlay container, we can add back the new class. And we also need to send out the behavioral subject and update it in the stream to the new theme that we're going to be using. We can then take a look at the div where this is located and how that is going to be updated. Our ng model within our app component, we have our input class and we have that set as the app theme currently, as well as, a, like I said before, in the service, we have the behavioral subject preset to that as well. We're gonna change this so that it's just looking at the service object for the behavioral subject. And we are going to use a async to unwrap what's in the behavior subject so we can set the class every time the stream is updated. I apologize, sometimes my mind wanders all over the place when I'm programming. I try to cut these videos so that they are a little more sensical. But again, we're jumping back to sidenav.component.ts and we need to use dependency injection to inject the service into our side nav component. And then we can use that within our pick color that we had set up before on the app.component.html. At this point, we can use whatever colors passed in to append it to the theme within the service. Now that we have the service updated, the app component updated, the menu update with the colors, you should be able to switch in between them and it will update the toolbar to the correct theme because it's calling out to primary and we're updating the primary color. If we jump over into the kitchen sink, you should also see that theme flow into it. You'll notice that one thing we haven't updated yet is the grid list style and that's part of the SAS mixin that I wanna talk about. SAS mixins are pretty cool. You can start to use any of our variables that we've defined in the themes uh, SCSS file um, in other uh, component SCSS files. So you'll notice here that we set the background to a very specific variable that was used in SAS. And that's not necessarily what we want to do because we want that grid list to change depending on what theme we updated. So instead of depending it on a specific one, we'll include that, that in a mix-in so that it picks up on the current primary color as the background color. Now that we have our mix-in set up, we'll go ahead and define in our class, uh, in, in style.css, we'll have all of our class names and we'll include this new mix-in with that and we can pass the theme variable directly in with that and so that in our mixin, we actually look up what the primary color currently is. So every time you switch your class theme, it will adjust to the correct color. Now, if you open up the kitchen sink again, when you go back down to the grid list, you should see that when flipping the theme color, it does indeed update to the correct color of the primary uh, color for the theme. Now, most people won't enjoy having to change that theme color every single time they come to the site. So what we can do in our color service picker uh, under core services, we can actually use our local storage to update that correctly. So then we can read 
on initialization, um, the correct theme that's in our local storage and broadcast that out using the uh, behavior subject. Another way of doing this would be to save this off in Firebase's Firestore um, so that your database could travel with the correct theme color across all of your applications. As we continue building out this book example, we'll probably end up using it in Flutter um, to create native apps as well as Hummingbird to check it out in the browser. So it'll be pretty key that we always keep that type of information um, stored in our database for the user information. If you go back to the app once we've updated this, you can open the application in the dev tools for Chrome. You can see that our color picker was already set um, once you flip the color every time, and you can refresh the page because we're now using that storage. So if you flip it to purple, you'll see the theme purple, sorry, pink uh, shows up here. That way, every time your app is reloaded, as long as you haven't changed browsers in this case, you will get a consistent look and feel because the theme will reload. I did want to take a quick note here that I am putting every uh, every spot in this that I found something important into a git commit so you can always cycle back through those. Now one very important thing I wanted to cover is that using one theme you're at a pretty small CSS file but when we added five themes it's five times that CSS file. So it's very important that if you only need to change a few things use our mix-in strategy that we had set up so that you can just set a background here and there where you need to or just change a single color because redoing an entire theme uh, takes up a lot of space. Um, something to note, on Ionic 4, you can actually use CSS variables, which is a much more efficient way to do that, in my opinion. Uh, go ahead and check that out over on Ionic 4 site. I do reference that there is still a GitHub issue open for this, for the Angular material theming, but it is quite a large change, so I don't know if they'll ever do it. This was a pretty lengthy lesson and there's some difficult subjects in it so if you have a hard time at all please reach out on slack uh, or in the youtube comments if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe so aj can keep on programming